we could very easily end up in a situation where you're denied health care that you need because of the fact that someone doesn't like you politically. I recently made a video about a law that I proposed called FIPNA. Payment processors can control what you are allowed to do by cutting off your income stream. Now imagine if you were blacklisted from every bank, every payment processor because of your political beliefs. You cannot exercise your freedom of speech if you cannot survive. And my main argument was that the difference between banks or other financial companies and every other company is that you don't have a choice when it comes to avoiding banks. If you avoid a bank today, you effectively avoid participating in the modern economy and in pretty large portions of society. Those who get kicked off of platforms like the Patreon purge all had political commentary or political leanings as a pretty big part of what they do. You cannot avoid financial service platforms in the modern economy because if you do avoid them, you have no way to pay for anything that is outside of your ability to hand over cash, physical cash. You cannot order from Amazon if you don't have some kind of electronic payment method, um, even just drafting from a checking account. It goes beyond just drafting from a checking account because I could see you saying, oh, well, if like uh, Visa and MasterCard, the duopoly basically of payment card processors that serve as something other than their own brand of credit card. If Visa and MasterCard decide Richard Spencer, uh, Take, now, you know what? Make it Sargon. Less controversial. They decide Sargon is an unsavory figure and that they don't want to have anything to do with him. They don't want to support him. They have some sort of moral imperative to make sure that their business does not support Sargon and his narrative, whatever that may be. So Visa and MasterCard decide they don't want Sargon to be able to use Visa and MasterCard. Okay, that cuts him out of not only credit cards, but also all the bank cards that exist in the United States. I don't know about overseas. I, I'm, I've never been overseas, so I'm an uneducated, ignorant American about that. But that cuts him out of the major payment card processors in the United States, and you might say, well, what about bank drafts, you know, automated clearinghouse drafts, electronic funds transfers, whatever name you have for them. What about that? Because that bypasses the credit card companies, right? <clears throat> well, yeah, it bypasses the credit card companies if you have, you know, bank A draft from bank B directly or whatever. But here's the problem. It doesn't bypass the credit card companies because even if a bank just deals with bank drafts to and from Sargon, they are still partnered with one of the payment card processors and they have very, very big reasons to not lose that partnership. If they lose that partnership, there's only one other payment card processor they can realistically go to, and that's the other half of the duopoly. So envision this scenario. MasterCard says, we don't like Sargon. He's got to go. No one can let Sargon make money through the MasterCard network, period. Okay, whatever. Well, the MasterCard network covers bank cards, too, so he's been banned from a lot of stuff. Now, it goes further because what if Sargon has a bank account and is like, I'm going to do bank transfers? Well, if MasterCard has as a condition, they don't even have to have it as a condition in the official paperwork. If MasterCard says to MasterCard partnered Bank X, um, here's a list of people and we don't like these people, we don't want to fund these people in any way, you as one of our partners 
that means that they're not allowed to have anything to do with you either, or we will pull all of your MasterCard processing capability. Now you have a bank being told by MasterCard, if they keep Sargon around, even if he doesn't use MasterCard directly, that MasterCard has this moral imperative and they wish for the bank to enforce it too. This is not an unrealistic situation. This is very possible. This could happen. I don't know if it has or has not happened, and I'd love it if anyone watching this would elaborate with any sort of references to cases that this kind of thing may have happened. But imagine, if you will, a bank that would be perfectly fine. They don't care. Dollar is the bottom line. End of story. But then MasterCard says, we'll pull all of your customers' bank card capability to go through the MasterCard network if you do not do this. He's blacklisted not only from being able to use the MasterCard network, but any bank partnered with them. Now, you notice I keep saying MasterCard because MasterCard always seems to be the company that this comes back to. What about Visa? Visa's the same thing. Visa and MasterCard, same thing. It's what's known as a duopoly. It's one of the potential inevitable entities in capitalism that is unregulated or poorly regulated where a duopoly is basically what they call a monopoly of two. Visa and MasterCard control the entire payment card market and that's just the end of it. They can do whatever they want and you can bet that if MasterCard says no that Visa is not just going to be like, oh yeah, no, we're, we're totally fine with that. You can bet that those companies share information because even though they're competitors, they're a duopoly. It benefits them to share certain information because of the duopoly nature of their businesses. So you can effectively consider them as being work, as working in concert with one another. You're probably wondering, because this video is gonna be titled something a little bit different than here I go again about FIPNA. Um, you're probably wondering where I'm going with all of this. I read a tweet this morning, a tweet that it, I had seen this before in, in various YouTube comments and I dismissed it as conspiracy theory nonsense. Various YouTube comments have been saying that in response specifically to this Patreon purge and PayPal and MasterCard and all of that, Square, Stripe, PayPal, blah, 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 um, kicking people off for political reasons that it's China's social credit system come to the US. If you're not familiar, you need to look it up to fully understand it, but the, the basics are the Chinese government is now tracking every citizen in every way it can, assigning that citizen a sort of social credit score based on the actions that they take. They get a social credit score. Now this is not like a credit card credit score. This is a number assigned to you for how well basically you do what the government wants you to do um, or how much of a rebel you are and so on. And you can be denied basic services if your social credit score is poor. So it's China's social credit system coming to the United States. Well, that's preposterous because the government can't possibly put in a social credit system. People would be up in arms. Those conspiracy theory nutjob comments? They're not wrong. Because the tweet that I read that kind of set off the fire in my head was someone was making a joke. It was like, it's the year 2023. Um, sir, we're going to have to stop doing cancer treatments for your child because we ran a social media background check on you and you said an offensive word um, several years ago on your social media. And, you know, from that proceeded several comment chains um, just kind of joking about it. I put my own in there. You know, I, I can't remember what I said. It, it, was, uh, it was a joke, but the problem that I had was that that struck me as potentially being real. Um, the second half of it, the second tweet that was chained to it, is what sort of brought it full circle and changed me from a little bit of humor to a little bit of dread. The 
company that makes the treatment is the only company that has it, and they're the ones who tell us that we can't give it to you, um, and, you know, if it was the government, that might be a problem, but it's a private company, so it's okay. That's what we're already seeing with the, with the Patreon purge and the aftermath. The Patreon purge, we see people who are right-wingers banned from financial service platforms, and not just one, but every financial service platform they go to is banning them to the point that other entire platforms relying on those bigger processors are destroying those platforms by yanking their services just to keep these blacklisted people, this neo-McCarthyism going. And I thought about it like, well, it'd be horrible if banks were like that with people trying to have normal accounts, but I didn't even fathom. I guess I'm just, it, it's such a ridiculous notion, but it could very well happen the way things are going. We could very easily end up in a situation where you're denied health care that you need because of the fact that someone doesn't like you politically. You could potentially be killed through lack of treatment or inferior health care, even if you were willing to foot the bill, because someone doesn't like you, heard you were getting medical treatment at a hospital, and went to the hospital and the outrage mob convinced them not to treat you. Imagine if that applied to auto mechanics, you know, restaurant services, whatever. It's scary. And that's what's got me worried right now. I might make another video about it, but just think about that. And with that, I'll leave you. Sound is speeding. Camera rolling. Blah, blah, blah. Look at me, I'm a professional. Professional lunatic, maybe.